What's going on YouTube? Day back again and guess what? It's another Tip Tuesday. Just going to give you a little bit. That's right. We're continuing on with the regular series of just giving you guys some tips and hints and something that hopefully helps someone out later on down in the future. Today we're going to be talking about, well, some of the primers and mostly the base ones that I end up using. I will say right off the bat because I already know there'll be comments and there'll probably be some hate messages down in the bottom. Dear Dave, stop being such an ass. One thing you will never find in my collection is a can of Rust-Oleum or Krylon or anything like that. Back in the day I used to use them for the larger figures but Nowadays, I don't. Um, main reason being, well, once you prime it, you have to you have to basically resand it because of the texture that's on it is just too big. If you're doing something like a car body part or lawn furniture or something big like that, and you don't care, and you're going to go over it with a can of well. Krylon color or something like that which will settle into that that is perfectly fine you use that to your heart's content but for something small like miniatures gunpla things like that I would not recommend it because you're going to waste even more time going over it with fine sandpaper buffing it down so that you can go back over it and paint it so these are the primary primers that I end up using I have a mix here I have for lacquers this one's for lacquer these are for lacquers acrylics and I don't have any Tamiya primer, uh, mainly because it's just very expensive and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I have bad habit of, it just peels. It doesn't stick very well. Um, these guys I've had really no issues with. These are three different ones and it's not even all of them. But I'm just gonna go over real quick, let you guys know what I end up using, what I end up using it for, and then going from there. Because I'm an Amazon whore, there will be links down in the description to everything. All right, so starting off with Mr. Surfacer, there are several different grades of Mr. Surfacer. There's a 500. 500 is a brush on. Um, you can also add some texture stuff to it to make a, kind of a goopy compound, which is good for both filling gaps and blemishes, things like that. And also adding texture to, let's say, uh, the foot of your Gundam if it's going through a mud or something like that and then painting over that um, That is very good for that Or if you're wanting to build up a surface or you're wanting to put that on kind of goop it on and then use a sponge to stipple it um, It creates a great effect on that and maybe I'll show that to you guys in a future video but for this um, They make these in three different grades. Mr. Prime um, they changed the name of this, I think, a couple years ago. It used to be just Mr. Surfacer, um, but this is Mr. Primer Surfacer. And like I said, it comes in 500, 1000. I think it comes in a 1200 as well, and then a 1500. 1000 is perfect for your everyday use. Uh, you can brush this on once you've shaken it up and everything. This is a lacquer base. So you can brush it on, but it's also made to be able to airbrush. I do generally thin this down. Um, they make a Mr. Leveling primer. Uh, and I what I do is I just get this and then I may add 10, maybe 20% of the leveling thinner to it. And once you spray this on, it's going to self level and be completely a nice and smooth. Um, you're not going to have any issues with that. This is my go-to anytime that I have to really work on resin uh, or anything in general, but this works really great on resin. Now moving up on the thing, you can see um, this is actually separated. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but the, the bottom half is the black and then top half is just the thinner part. Um, I haven't shaken these in a while. I actually have 12 bottles of these, but this is Mr. Finishing Surfacer Black 15, uh, 1500. And this is gonna be really good if you're doing a metallic overcoat. This is gonna give you a nice smooth uh, finish on there. Um, you can add some more gloss to it if you're wanting. But yeah, this works perfect for that. It is going to give you a slick, slick surface. Um, you definitely want to spray this, set the piece to the side in a dust-free zone, and just leave it sit for 24 to 48 hours just to set up nice and solid. Um, it will get a shell on there, but it on any of these primers, you're just going to want to let them sit for... Um, 
I generally say a minimum of 12 hours for a solid, solid uh, uh, binding, um, but 24 hours for, for your best results. Next up is Mr. Resin Primer Surfacer. Now this is intended for resin parts. This is a, um, I wanna say it's about the equivalent of a Mr. 1000, but this is a little, uh, little harsher and made to grip uh, resin a little bit more. And uh, the main purpose for using a primer is, is you have a resin part, let's say this, um, you've washed it, you've gotten it all sanded down and everything, and you want it to bind. And what happens is it binds to the resin and then it leaves a very fine toothed surface uh, for your regular paint to stick to. If you were to put just regular paint over this, first time you touched it with uh, a piece of tape and went to peel it off, it's just going to come right off. Um, so that's the main purpose in using a primer is for that durability for your base colors and your top coats to stick to the part. But yeah, so this is the resin primer. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot. I've only used this bottle for maybe a couple of small projects. Like I said, I use the Mr. Primer 1000. It's actually cheaper. This is uh generally i want to say about seven eight dollars a bottle uh when i usually pick it up i usually watch for it to go on sale where the surfacer is usually like four or five dollars for a bottle if you're being stingy and you want to go on the rampage of saving money technically and i have done this quite a few times you can take this put it into a container or put some of this into a container and match it with the equal amount of thinner and you will be perfectly fine on that. You don't need a thick coat, you just need enough to block out the surface that's underneath it so you can uh, get a nice coating on there. Next up from our friends over at Alclad is the Alclad Primer. And now this is another lacquer base. Um, this comes in several different colors. You can get it in a, I believe a black, the white, the gray, and I'm not sure. I thought there was another color that you can get. So this is a primer and a micro filler. So this is designed so that when you spray it on, um, it's going to settle into the cracks and crevices. It, it does the same thing with the Mr. Primer. Uh, you can see how it settles. You have to shake the crap out of this um, to get it to mix up very well. Uh, it is affordable, but yeah, it is a lacquer. It is fumable. This is airbrush only. These others you can actually brush on, but this is airbrush only. Don't even try to uh, don't even try to regularly brush it. My main reason for having that is for this, and this is the gloss base um, for doing like my chrome, my alkali chrome, things like that. Um, I pretty much put this down and then this over the top and I n have never had any issues of either one trying to lift off. Next up, we're taking a look at an acrylic polyurethane a surface primer. This is an uh, acrylic, of course. You can brush this, you can airbrush it. It is airbrush ready. Um, I have never had an issue with this on the metallic pieces. Every once in a while, it won't want to stick even with using the metal primer. This works very good. It settles. It, it is not my favorite of favorites. Um, but yeah, it's easily available at most places. It's by Vallejo. Um, it has a good finish, not the greatest finish on here. The surface is going to have a little more texture to it and it's going to dry yeah, pretty quick. I would usually suggest adding um, both with this one and the next one, just a little bit of flow aid, or you can use something like a flow improver. If you stay tuned in a future episodes of Tip Tuesday, I'm gonna show you how to make uh, both of those on the cheap, like cheap, cheap. But yeah, I would add just a couple drops of the flow aid to like a cup full of this. What it does is it's going to slow down the drying process. So one, it doesn't stick to your needle and two, so that it will uh, give it more time on the model to settle. It means it's going to take a little bit longer for it to dry and cure, 
but just give it time. This comes in a multitude of colors, by the way. Um, I believe this is, comes in black, gray, green, red, blue, brown. Um, yeah, so this comes in a lot of different colors. Last up on my list is Steinal Res, and this is by Badger. Uh, I have a couple different colors here, and this isn't even all of them. This is another one that they make in black, blue, brown, uh, gray, okra. Yeah, they make like eight different colors. Now you can get an eight pack, which is in this size here. You have these size bottles, which I think these are the four ounce bottles, uh, I think. And then they have like a 32 ounce jug that you can end up buying, which is more primer than you will ever use in your lifetime. I don't suggest doing, um, doing that. So yeah, the basic colors that I have here, I have these green, this green, which I'm going to be using for my death guard uh, as a base coat. So yeah, there's this. And then the base colors that I end up always having on hand is black, white, and gray. Now out of these, if I want to do some Zenith highlighting or something like that, what I can do is I can base it in black. I can do the first Zenith highlight in the dark gray, and then I can do the vinyl, final highlight in the white, and then I can start painting. I'll show you guys in a future video what I mean by Zenith highlighting. Now, for what this ends up doing, this is another um, acrylic-based polyurethane. Very durable. I have had no issues. So on this piece, this is the dozer blade for the uh, Death Guard tank of the Plague Burster. So this has been based in this. Uh, one single coat, nice even coverage. It has a nice texture, but it's not like lumpy or anything and it is very durable it scratches off the the rough texture but as you can see you can't see any of the gray of the plastic underneath very durable um, i have had no issues of course if you take the back of a X exacto blade to it or something like that you're going to get some uh, get some issues on that forewarning i did end up hearing an issue over the winter where some orders were having problems of being frozen in the mail and then the primer separating too much and not binding back together. You do want to shake it really well, um, but I haven't had any issues with these. The last bottle that I ended up getting was this and I super tested it just to make sure. One thing I always end up doing is as soon as I get something like this, I open it up and I stick some weights inside of it um, so that they'll settle to the bottom. You can hear it for uh, making sure and getting a good mixture. This is a little bit thick. It's, a, it's actually a lot thicker than the Vallejo. Badger's suggestion is use a 0 0.50 needle, um, which is probably something like uh, the Vega, uh, but most people now are running a super small because well for some reason they think smaller is better when it comes to airbrushing and you know that's perfectly fine and we'll go over that when we touch on airbrushing again coming back to the flow aid or the flow improver and mixing that in to get a nice um, milky finish and airbrushing that through a 0 0.25 0 0.35 something like that tip and I have no issues this was done with a 0.50. I have some that I ended up doing with the 0.25 with it thinned down and those came out same texture and everything. It just, it will goop up your, if you try doing it straight in a smaller tip with a lower pressure, you do want to be pushing about 30 pounds of pressure when you airbrush with this. Um, just straight out of the bottle, even with a little bit of thinner. Uh, higher pressure is going to work best for you, though it is going to give you a little more dry tip. All right, boys and girls, I hope that helped somebody out. There are some great information out there in the different forums about primers, about best ways to use them. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own style. It's kind of something that you kind of have to find for yourself. You'll You'll get that groove. Um, that is comfortable for you and works best. Everybody's airbrush is different. Everybody's airbrush setup is different and everybody's style of doing it is different. So this is just a base to give you guys some knowledge on at least what I end up using and what I have found is reliable. I mean, that's the, the main, my main purpose. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Tip Tuesday. If you did, click that like button, click that subscribe button. And as usual, YouTube, stick around. We're going to have another great episode next week. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace out, YouTube.